Well, hello boys and girls. Um, it's Saturday night. I have to go tomorrow to take Zachary to camp. Zach works at Wolf Mountain and so he and Mark Flakes are going to go back there. So I am going to be sharing my Sunday school lesson tonight, today, and then I'm going to send it to mom so that she can share it with you. So how did everybody, did everyone have a good Thanksgiving? Hope that you did. We had a good time here. It was just our family. We rested. Um, I don't know if you know that Abby likes to sew. So we've got some things here she's working on. We, she made some masks that were Christmassy. This one kind of has a check. And then I wore one to the store today that looks kind of like this. So we had our Thanksgiving feast and then we rested, did some, um, napping and then did some sewing, played some games. I hope that you guys had a good time. I saw some pictures of some of your times on Facebook. I think I saw, um, Sheldon, I think I saw some pictures of your mom. Anyway, I hope that you guys have had a good time. We did. Did you share some things around your table that you're thankful for? I hope that you did. I hope that you can think of right now some things that you're thankful for. Maybe you're thankful for a whole week off from school. You know, none of you had to go to school next week, last week. Um, tomorrow, though, you'll have to get up and get on Zoom and talk to your teacher. But, um, yeah, it was a good time. Well, does anyone remember who we've been talking about? We've talked about um, Abraham, of course. We talked about Abraham. Do you remember who Abraham's son was? We had Abraham, and then we had Isaac. And then do you remember Isaac's son? Hmm. Anyone remember? And then we kept going and kept going until we finally, we got to Joseph, didn't we? we we've talked about a lot of people. We talked about Joseph and then last week we talked about Joseph and his brothers. And I think I kind of skipped through it really quickly. I don't know that I looked at the curriculum because we're still talking about Joseph today. We're talking about how he had a good attitude, even though bad things happened to him. You know, we can get grumpy and say, well, that person did me wrong. And we can be justified and say, well, I don't have to be nice to that person because they're mean. You know, Joseph, he had some brothers that threw him into a pit, sold him into slavery, but still he continued to have a good attitude, didn't he? We learned uh, last week, about Joseph, about how he, um, he got sold into slavery. He went into Potiphar's house. I don't think we talked about all of this, but you guys know about Joseph, don't you? About Potiphar's wife lied about him and how he was still able to maintain a good work ethic. He worked very hard. Not only did he work hard, he was promoted because of his hard work and his good attitude. You know, sometimes you might say, well, I work hard, but maybe you do it with a grumbly spirit, huh? He didn't do any of those things. He didn't have a grumbly spirit. He did work hard though. And here we see how, remember the dream that the Pharaoh had? I think we talked about that last week. Even showed you some pictures about the dream about the, uh, the, the fat cows and the skinny cows and the, the, the grains of wheat that were very, uh, very skinny and some that, that were very fat and how God, how God told, told Joseph exactly what to tell to the Pharaoh, that that meant that there would be seven years of lots and lots of food and seven years of famine. And that's where we left off yes, last week, where his brothers had come to him because his brothers needed food. His father had heard. His father's name is Israel, remember? He was named Jacob. And remember, Jacob was the deceiver. I uh, remember Jacob and Esau and how he was fooled. And he ended up marrying Rachel and Leah. He married Leah first. And Leah... Um, bore him 10 sons and then he then there were two sons that Rachel had remember Rachel was the woman that he really loved and there was there was uh, Joseph and there was Benjamin well, you know Rachel actually died at that time after she had those two sons so these two sons are very special to um to Israel and you know of course Joseph his father thinks that he's dead 
and so Benjamin is with his father back in um, in in Canaan. I'm I'm sitting here with Pastor Snow, and I'm hearing every single click and every single cough because Mrs. Snow gets irritated by those noises. You know I do, don't you? All the click, click, click. I want to throw something at him, but. Um, here, the brothers, remember, he gave them some grain, and I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to try to do this. I know last time I didn't do it very well. Let me see. I don't see the right screen, so let me turn that off for a minute. Let me find the screen. I thought I pulled it up. It's different when I use this than when I use my, um, when I use Google Meet, so I think I can do it now. So let's see. Here, I'm going to show some pictures. Remember, his brothers, he had um, given them grain, and here, he gave them grain. He actually, um, they paid him money, and what had happened was they actually put the money, Joseph had the money put back into the bags, and Joseph here is very emotional because he knows who his brothers are. He knows that these are the men that tried to have him, well, originally they wanted to kill him, didn't they? And then Reuben stood up and said, no, don't kill him. Don't kill him. Why don't we just put him in this pit? And when Reuben left, they sold him. And here he's very emotional. But you know, he's not angry. He's not mad at them. He could have been extremely angry. He could have had them all beheaded right then. He could have thrown them into prison. But he is showing grace. He's showing God's grace. It says here, Joseph sat his brothers at the meal table in, in age order from oldest to youngest. Joseph sat at his own table. Benjamin was, was served five times as much food as the others. Remember, they requested that Benjamin come back. And that was really hard for the father because the father said, I've already lost Joseph. I can't lose Benjamin too. And here, Joseph, he really loves his brother Benjamin the most, doesn't he? Because he is... They both have the same mother. And here we see how Joseph is really having a lot of self-control. He could have been very angry. Here we see how he, uh, he took his special goblet. It says, after they had eaten, Joseph gave orders for their sacks to be filled with grain. But he, he said, put my silver cup in Benjamin's sack. The brothers were up at dawn and went on their journey, but they did not know that Joseph's special goblet was in there. It wasn't just any cup. It wasn't like you just pull something out of the cupboard. This was very special. And here it shows that when they had gone only a short distance out of the city, Joseph said to his palace manager, chase after them and stop them. When you catch, catch up with them, ask why they have repaid my kindness with such evil and stolen my master's silver cup. He was kind of setting them up here. And here we see how he goes out. He, the palace manager caught up with the men and spoke to them. And they said, we have no clue what you're talking about. It says, let the, it, he, it says, you know, if any one of us has stolen from you, let that man be killed and let us all be your slaves. Because they were so convinced they hadn't done anything wrong that they said, there's no way. And here they dug through the sacks and there they found that gold goblet and they found it in Benjamin's sack. Ben, remember, Benjamin is the youngest brother, the one that Joseph really, um, that's his, his full brother. He, they, they have the same mother and the same father. It says, the sacks were searched in the silver cup found in Benjamin's sack. When the brothers saw it, they tore their clothes in despair. It says that they were so sad that they ripped their clothes. That was a sign of, of being distressed. Back in those days, I don't know if you remember the story of Esther, Mordecai. Um, he sat in front of the king's gates and he, and he shed his clothes and he put ash all over himself. That was to show that he was extremely sad, that he was very, very sad. And these boys, these, no, they're not boys, these men, they knew that since they found that goblet, something bad was going to happen. So they tore their clothes. It says, Judah, and, Judah and, and his brothers fell to the ground before Joseph. What, if, what have you done? Joseph demanded. Don't you know that I can predict the future? 
Judah replied, how can we explain and prove our innocence? God is punishing us for our sins. It says, my Lord, we have all returned to be your slaves, not just our brother who put, the, put it in, his, in their sack. They were begging him, please just take us as slaves. Because he, they knew at that point that they could have been killed. And what do you think they're, they're referring to when they say, um, when they say, we're just being punished for our sins. What do you think that is? You think they're remembering back to that time when their brother, uh, when they when they took their brother? Why don't we look in the Bible? Why don't we read the Bible verses that go with that? Genesis chapter 44. Remember, Genesis is the very first book of the Bible. Genesis, first uh, uh, chapter 44. And let's look at this. It says... It says, uh, so Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house, and he was still there, and they fell before him to the ground. And Joseph said, what deed is this that, that you have done? Did you not know that such a man as I can certainly practice divination? He's saying, I can do all kinds of things here. It says, then Judah says, what shall we say to my Lord? What shall we speak? How shall we clear ourselves? God has found out our iniquities of your servants. Here we are, my Lord's slaves, both we and he who also put the cup was found. But he said, far be it from me that I should do so. The man, is, the man in whose, whose hand the cup was found, he shall be my slave and for you go up in peace to your father. Ooh, do you think that's gonna be a good thing? You know, when, when, um, when Jacob agreed to allow Benjamin to go, he was very sad. He just said, you know, there's no way that we can do this because Benjamin, I don't want to lose Benjamin. I've already lost, I've already lost Joseph. And then it says, then Judah came near to him and said, oh my Lord, please let your servant speak a word in my Lord's hearing and do not let your anger burn against your servant for you are even like Pharaoh. So here the brother, remember the dreams that Joseph had a couple lessons ago? He dreamt that the brothers bowed down to him. He dreamt that even the sun, moon, and the stars, meaning the mother and the father bowed down to him. Isn't that coming true? It's coming true where the brothers are showing Joseph uh, what we might call honor. They're honoring him. They're very afraid of him. And it says, and we said to my Lord, we we have a father, an old man, and a child of his old age who is young. His brother is dead, that they think that's Joseph, and he alone is left of his mother's children, and his father loves him. Then you said to your servants, bring him down to me, and I will set your eyes upon him. And we said to my Lord, the lad cannot leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father would die. They're saying, remember, we told you, we told you that we could not do this to our father. And it says here, it says, uh, our father told us to go back, said that we had to come back to you. And we, we had to come because we needed food. So that's why we bought ben, brought Benjamin. And it says, and they're, they're just pleading with them. And he says, please don't let us do this to our father. It would just kill him. And here, you've got to see, they're begging him. If you can see in the picture. And here, Joseph, he starts to cry. Don't you think that shocked the men? Look at the looks on their faces. Having the second in command to the Pharaoh, here he could just strike them down and kill them. And all of a sudden he starts bursting into tears. He's thinking of his father. He's thinking of his brother. He's having a hard time holding up this, uh, this charade. You know what a charade is? It's when you dress up and you pretend to be something you're not. And that's what he's doing right now. He's doing this charade with his brothers because he doesn't want, he's trying to, you know, how do we know what he's trying to do? Except that he's trying to let them know He's not letting them know yet, but here we see he's grieving. He's grieving for his brother and his father. So listen what happened. It says, then Joseph could not restrain himself before all those who stood by him and cried out, make everyone go out from me. So he wants all the servants gone. So no one stood with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers. 
And he wept aloud and the Egyptians in the house of Pharaoh heard it. So here he's crying, he's crying really loudly. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father still live? But his brothers could not answer him for they were dismayed. Show me on your face what they probably looked like. I can, th I can, I can see uh, Sophia doing that right now. Sophia, can you do that? They're looking shocked because here we hear they see his, this is his brother. This is their brother. The one that they sold into slavery. They assumed he'd probably died or that he was just living in some poor house somewhere. And it says that they were dismayed. And he, and he says, please come near to me. So they came near. Then he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But now do, do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. That makes me want to cry. Isn't that amazing? Joseph could have been so angry at his brothers. He could have been so mad. His brothers, they were wicked. You see, Mrs. Snow, my eyes starting to water here. That is amazing because he showed them love when they did everything but evil. I mean, all kinds of evil to him. He says, don't worry, because God did this for a reason to preserve life. God sent Joseph there to save the people of that land because God knew that Joseph would be able to read the dreams because God could help him. And he saved a whole bunch of people. A whole bunch of people would have died in that famine and even his own family. And it says, it says, for these two years, the famine has, has been, been in the land and there are still five years in which there, there will be nothing plowed or harvested. He said, it's only been two years in the famine. We still have five years left. And he says, God sent me before you to preserve our prosperity for you and the earth and to save your lives in a great deliverance. Remember the promise that God had made to Abraham? He said, I'm going to bless your family. You're going to have so many descendants. And, you know, Abraham was old when, when Isaac was born, right? He was old. And then Isaac had children, and then here we see we're going all the way down to Joseph, and God was preserving their family through Joseph. They could have all died in the famine. You know, there are times in history where horrible things can happen, and a lot of people in a family could die, but here God knew what was going to happen. And he says, Joseph says to him, he says, um, Oh, I, I went ahead too far. Let's see. It says, so now it was not you who sent me here, but God. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh, meaning I'm a counselor to Pharaoh and a Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go to my father and say to him, thus says your son, Joseph, God has, God has made him Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not tarry. It means don't don't take too long. Come quick, come quick. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me and your children and your children's children, your flocks and your herds and all that you have. And there I will provide for you, lest you and your household and all that you have come to poverty. And there should, because there's still going to be five years of famine. So here God used Joseph, didn't he? He said, come get your father, Tell, bring him, bring everyone with you. And remember, they've got a lot of family, don't they? They have a lot of family. And God used that in the life of Israel to be able to, to uh, be able to preserve them. It says, the brothers returned to Jacob. Joseph is still alive. He is governor of all the land of Egypt, they told him. Jacob was stunned and he couldn't believe it. The brothers repeated to Jacob everything Joseph had told them. When Jacob saw, saw the wagons jo Joseph had sent, he, he exclaimed, it must be true, my, my son Joseph is alive. I must go and see him before I die. And that's exactly 
what they did. They brought all their people with them and they ended up and they settled in Egypt. Now, this is the last story of this lesson, but does anyone remember what happens after this? I'm not sure if the story, you know, we go on and I got a brand new lesson coming up. We're going to talk next about, we're going to talk about Moses. I thought it was, I just wanted to make sure it was going in order. We get to talk about Moses and that's how the Israelite people, how they end up in Egypt because God uses them and God, uh, God used Joseph, didn't he? Now, Joseph had a really good attitude, didn't he? He trusted in God all through his time being, um, being taken by his brothers, being thrown into slavery. When he's in Potiphar's house, he had a good attitude, even when the, the wife lied about him. He had a good attitude in prison, even though it took a long time for them to finally remember him. And when he was with, when he was with um, the Pharaoh, he still had a good attitude. He trusted God. You know, sometimes things happen to us that are really bad. You know that we can choose to have the right attitude. We can choose to trust God. We can choose not to be angry, not to, not to get mad when people do us wrong, but to always be trusting in what God has for us. You know, the best way to do that is by being in the Bible. You know, I know that each one of you can read. I know Zachary's in kindergarten. Zachary's learning how to read, but the rest of you can read. You can read the Bible. The Bible gives us, it says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I want to encourage you to read your Bible. You know, Genesis is kind of a hard place to start. I might start in the New Testament. I might start in John and you can read about the life of Jesus. You might start in Proverbs or in Psalms. I enjoy reading in Psalms. It talks about praising God. But we can get our mind on God, and that'll help us to trust God, won't it? Especially when things are hard, when bad things happen to us. Let's look at our Bible verse for today, the one that, um, that goes with our verse. It says here, let's see, our verse, it says, but as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it for good to save much people alive. Let's me read that again. That's in Genesis 50, verse 20. It says, but as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it for good. So let's focus on that this week, that there might be bad things that happen. Right now, the pandemic is an awful thing. You don't, do, you don't get to be at school with your friends. Maybe even at Thanksgiving time, you didn't get to be with your, as many family members as you'd like to because not everybody could get together. You know, let's focus on some things that we can focus on about how God is, how God knows everything. And, and God answers our prayer, doesn't he? Sometimes he says yes, sometimes he says no, but sometimes he says wait, but we can pray. We can ask God to protect our family. We can thank God that we live in a country that um, we do have a house. We can thank God for a lot of things. Let's go ahead and let's Think of some things, some things that we can thank God for. Next week, we'll talk about Moses, and I'll be around next week. Uh, when you're watching this sometime tomorrow, I'll be driving. It takes a long time. It takes about three and a half hours to get Zach back to camp, and then I have to turn back around and drive back, so I wanted to do it before it got dark. So anyway, I hope that you guys have a good day and that you are um, thanking the Lord and knowing that God is in control. And I'll see you guys later. I'll see you guys next week. So have a good day. Bye.